everyone, welcome to the channel. We are Sorted Food. Today I have a selection of amazing ingredients from around the world that recently got me pretty excited when I first learned about them. So today, let's see what our normals think and see if we can blow some minds. Lift the cloche. It looks like a cross between star anise and shriveled up garlic. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. Why are there two different ones? One's moist, one's dry. Correct. These particular ones we bought in their dried form and then we hydrated them so that you can have a little bit of a lick and a nibble of the wet ones. Right, Let's cheers. Try this. Really should it gets you in the glands. Mm. It's really recognisable, but I can't put my finger on what it is. They eat like a sun-dried tomato in texture and they taste vinegary. Yeah, it's vinegary. The smell though is more like fig or raisin, like dried fruit. This is kokum. It is a member of the mangosteen family. So on the tree, it tends to be a reddish fruit. And as it ripens and then as it's dried, it comes more purpley and darker in color. Where in the world do you think it comes from? See, I think mangosteen and think tropical, but it's not a mango. No, it's different from but a mango. But I do think it's from a tropical environment. I'm gonna go Asian. Very broadly Asian. Yes, very broadly Asian. Fine, I'll go South American then. <laughs> Jamie, you're definitely more right. So when we were looking at mangosteens, we were thinking sort of Malaysia, Indonesia. Mm. These, the kokum, Southwest India. Mm. Okay. When we were trying them, it reminded us of tamarind. Okay. That yep. kind of sour fruit yes. that you might add to otherwise creamy coconut based curries. Mm -hmm. Let's give you one of those. Ooh. So what we have prepared for you is a delicious coconut based Goan style curry crammed with various seafoods and mussels and scallops and prawns. But what we did was soak the kokum and then blend them up and stir it through so you get that kind of sourness where otherwise you might use something like tamarind or lime. Well, first off the bat, the smells are amazing and I ain't ever seen rice like that. No. And I cannot wait to eat that. This is fragrant with a capital F. Yeah, <laughs> it's effing fragrant. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Rude git. Oh, wow. Mm. That is peppered and it's creamy oh, 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 oh. and I'm here for that all day long. So commonly, kokum is added into dals and curries and soups and sauces as that kind of souring agent. You can literally get sour dal and things like that. I'm getting something like that. You get a bit of a tang when you add lime to a creamy curry, but it doesn't taste limey. Mm -hmm. I'm getting something like that, and I'm assuming it's not a, a, a citrus fruit juice. There is something there that's really hard to identify because I don't feel like I know the flavour, but it's adding an incredible roundness to the whole curry. So a bag like that is going to last you an awful long time. Am I going to be picking this up from the world food aisle in the supermarket, or am I going somewhere specific? That's, a, that's got to be a proper supermarket, hasn't it? Yeah, so I don't think you'll get those in UK retailers yet, because I don't think there's enough familiarity about them and how to use them. But all of the ingredients we're looking at today, next day delivery, UK, super simple, all very affordable. What's exciting to me is that this is one of the many puzzle pieces it takes to create a dish like that. It all comes together and then it starts to taste like the authentic versions. They always need hydrating. You're never just gonna chew on them. It's not a fruit as such. It's worth throwing into the mix that the stones, the pips, the seeds in the middle, grind those up and you can kind of get an oil out of them, like a butter. So you have coke and butter and that you might have seen in beauty products in the same way that coconut butters appear in those kind of skincare products as well. Kokum, something you'd like to devour or not your preferred sour? I'd like to devour it. I'm keen to devour it, but I need five places where I can use it and then I'll devour it. I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. They are long. Oh, that was slimy. <laughs> It, it smells pickly. These particular ones are pickled and have got a heat to them as well, a little bit of chilli in there. Cheers. Cheers. Why did I pick such a long one? <laughs> <laughs> well, they just taste exactly like a pickle. Basically, yeah, it's, it's, not got a some... it's not a dill pickle, is it? Is no, it? no. No, it's definitely got some heat to it as well. It's got a bite to it, in the same way that you'd expect from a pickled cucumber. Cucumber being predominantly... That bit. Water. Awesome. What else holds a lot of water? The ocean. A lake. 
that, a bath that is green and could be sliced. <laughs> Pepper is cactus. Cactus paddle, i.e. The, the leafy, fleshy part of a cactus. Wow. Okay. I did not see that. Coming. No. Where in the world do you think it's from? Mexico. <laughs> Yes, Mexico. Oh, yeah. oh right, great, great, excellent. We're going to go further. Yeah, cool. Genuinely, I might be on the verge of having my mind blown. Yeah, I've I've never heard of eating cactus before. I can imagine steak in a taco with a sauce, like a, a creamy sauce, and that on top. That would work really well together. Uh, yeah, in fajitas, like all sorts of stuff. Would you like to try something pretty similar? Cash, 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 cash. If you suck this bone, right. I will walk out. <laughs> I'm not being a part of that. <laughs> Lift the top off your avo. And that's what happens if you shake an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> what you have there is ribeye on the bone that's been air dried in the fridge for a couple of days, then slow cooked for five or six hours. Is that your slice? <laughs> with a salsa, with some avocado, with some charred peppers, some sour cream, and of course, minopolitos. Cheers. Now we've treated you boys to ribeye, but the cactus itself can become the hero in many, many dishes across Mexico. And is the cactus always pickled? No, that was very much how we could get hold of it. So it's in a jar, it's got a long shelf life, it becomes very affordable, next day delivery. In the streets of Mexico, it's actually often just sold as huge paddles on the street and it's, it's de-thorned. Mm -hmm. cleaned and then sliced to orders. So you can literally say, I want this much or this much and it's cut off. And then it can be used in all sorts of things from salads and tacos to turned into marmalades and chutneys. Um, and, and, and then it can also be pickled and preserved. It's great. I mean, that's not gonna not taste good. But the cactus gives you a pickle, it gives you the chili and it's great. And also what I like about this is I can think of a million ways to use that. Mm -hmm. Whereas the previous one, I was a bit limited within my own repertoire. When it's fresh, it's quite vegetal. So it's almost that cross between asparagus, green bean, okra, slight citrusiness. Does this prick up your ears? Or is it just a paddle of cack? Just. No, oh, I love it. You have pricked up my ears. You've got two pricks here. Number three. <laughs> Number three, lift the cloche. Oh. It looks like a cross between apple sauce and worms. I'm getting a stemmed ginger vibe. Yeah. Again, an ingredient I don't think we've ever featured on the channel. I can't smell anything. Oh, I'll get a bit of fruit. Cheers. Cheers. Fruit. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, crunchy. Oh, why is it so crunchy? It's like radishy, but not a radish. Mm. It's, like it's a got pear. proper crunch mm. and it crunches up into like bits, but it's also gelatinous. It's really odd. It, it, okay, I, yeah, I can see where you're going. Have you, is there anything you've ever had that's similar to it? No. It doesn't really taste of anything. This is shredded jellyfish. I was not expecting that. <laughs> and where in the world do you think this might be from? I've seen jellyfish all around the world. Um, one place in particular is Portugal. You should get the Portuguese man of war. I like that logic. It's wrong, but I love oh, that logic. I thought you'd got it then. I've been stung by jellyfish in three or four countries. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Have you really? Tunisia, Turkey, Portugal. You'll take any opportunity to <laughs> f***ing yourself, won't you? <laughs> China. You're right. This is a Chinese product. Oh. So they are popular in places like Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, China, also eaten in Taiwan, South Korea. I've got a question. It doesn't taste of anything. What nutritional benefits, if anything, is it like all fiber or is it protein? There's not much to it and they admit that there's not a huge amount of flavor. It's a popular delicacy as a snack or to add into dishes to provide texture something that is so popular right across Southeast Asia, and we've talked about this even when we were in Japan, getting used to some of the gelatinous kind of mochi, it's, it's a texture thing that we are less familiar with. But in this instance, it's literally added as a delicacy for that textural crunch. Would you like it in situ? We've created you a little salad. Wow. What you have is a poached chicken, cucumber and jellyfish salad, and it's all sort of tossed in a wonderful chili oil as well. Okay, cheers. cheers. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, howdy doodle. That is yeah. fantastic. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Well, it does a noodly job. Yeah, it does. It, it really does offer a crunch. Interestingly, it's also used um, as in-flight meals. In, for example, some of the Chinese airlines use them as salads. There's even a Japanese company that sells vanilla and jellyfish ice cream because cubes of the jellyfish hold that texture that you can crunch through in mm. ice cream, like any of the various ice cream options that might have honeycomb or mallow in it or something like that. You can actually have a fairly flavourless jellyfish to give you that texture. We only know jellyfish from standing on them or getting stung by them. Um, we? <laughs> Texture-wise, that adds everything that you want to a dish. I'm glad I I've tried it because it's fascinating. And it's like no other texture I've ever had. The cross between a, what feels like a gelatinous outside until you crunch through it. Where or whether I would ever use it in my own home cooking, I don't, I just don't know. And it's worth pointing out the little pouch that it comes in does come with a seasoning sachet and some finishing oil. So you could do exactly that, make a broth and, and, and heat it up in that with some vegetables. It's quite often just served with, you know, carrot and cucumber added. And again, there are lots, I was going to put a number to it, I'm going to say lots of different species of jellyfish, they're not all edible. Would I use it in like a cooking challenge or a battle here? 100%. Mm. Okay, final question for you. Is this tentacool or are you not ready for this jelly? Yes, yes, that's good. He doesn't get the reference, but it's good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what reference? I mean, I, I, I know they have tentacles. Fine. <laughs> I think they're a tentacool idea. I think it's a really tentacool idea. And now that I've tasted it, I would order it in a dish from a restaurant. Yes. But I don't know if I'm ready for this jelly at home. Boys, I've got one more for you. Lift the cloche carefully on number four. Yay! Two different versions of the same thing. Have a sniff, have a taste, and see if you can work out what this highly celebrated drink is. One came in a bottle, one came in a can. One's cloudy, one's darker. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, well, that is an unusual flavour in a drink. It's like sweet. But it's recognisable. It's like meady. It is meady, it's honeyy. It's got a little bit of fizz. I think mead was a good, mead was a good shout. I think mead is a fairly good shout. This particular drink is often then infused with the likes of honey or herbs or other bits and pieces. It's got like a bitter tea note. Yeah, but that, that, that bitterness is kind of malty. That's delicious. Mm. It's a bit biscuity. I like it, but I don't have any idea what it is. I really like it. This is kvass. So kvass, is a slightly fermented cereal-based drink. Mm. So low alcohol, might have a percent or two. And then once it's finished, sometimes it is infused with fruits or berries or honey sometimes, which is what you're possibly getting from some of those. And traditionally it would be made from the likes of rye bread. Interesting. Mm. So you <gasps> soak the rye That's bread. what it tastes like. Yeah. It tastes like rye. It tastes like a Reuben sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get some of those cactus pickles back. <laughs> Now you know that, where in the world do you think it might be from? Germany. Scandinavia. So the name Kvass, or sometimes, and this I might be getting wrong, Jira or Gira, I'm not sure what the G is. Popular across so many countries, including Poland, Ukraine, Latvia, Romania, Hungary, Lithuania, and Sweden, to name but a few. Very, very popular, kind of a family orientated drink, often of the lower classes, and it was literally old stale bread would be soaked, rye bread, and once it was soaked and kind of macerated for 24 hours or so, then they slightly ferment it and you get this wonderful drink. It has a slight fizz to it. Yeah. Slight alcohol content, but tiny, like one, one and one and a half percent, and it's something that everyone can enjoy. Would you like to pair it with some food? Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> na, na, na. Well, damn. A sausage board. <laughs> it's a board of sauce. This is essentially a whole bunch of things that we could pick up from a Polish deli. Oh. So there's all sorts of Polish sausage, some sort of roll mocky things, some nice gherkins, some kambanos, some rye bread, some rye vita. Yeah, snack away on the kind of excellent Polish sausage that has that snap and smokiness to it that's wonderful. 
So very deliberately, we've picked you a selection of Polish items that as a kind of platter and spread might be served with our kvass. The kvass itself can also be used in cooking. So it can be used as the base to soups or stews. In the same way we might do a beef and ale pie, they would sometimes use the kvass in cooking as well. But more often than not, it's just enjoyed on its own, um, kids and adults alike. This is amazing. So like any kind of beer, this could be made from a wort of just like rye flour and malt and you, you boil it up and release all the sugars yourself. Or it's a fantastic way to upcycle leftover bread. So for example, rye bread, you soak it, get all of the goodness out, and then you can add in more yeast, some more sugar if it's required, and it will ferment to a low alcohol option. I'm really surprised that something that is so popular in so many countries that close to the UK, mm. I've never heard of it. Really, really cool, really fascinating. It's fantastic. Not something I've seen in UK retailers, but again, easy to get hold of online. Is this the best thing since sliced bread? Oh. Or not Riley, your thing? <laughs> oh, lost it, lost it. I had such high hopes. That is terrible. If you're asking me if I like it, yes. Not sure I would buy some to get it in, in all honesty. But if I saw it when I was out and about, I would 100% get it. If I saw it, I'd buy one, and whoever I was with, I'd say, taste this. Taste this, yeah. I Polish sausage in one hand, kvass in the other. Good day. Fair to say, out of those four, I have had my mind blown. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, well done. We well done. our minds. Some really interesting things. Well, there's our thoughts, but do you agree? Which one of those interested you the most? Comment down below and share your opinions with everyone else. Our Meal Packs app has been reborn. Meet Sidekick your all-in-one kitchen companion, taking you through every step to crushing the week's cooking. First, choose three to five delicious meals for the week. Sidekick will then generate one shopping list and every fresh ingredient you buy will be completely used up across all those dishes. Bye-bye food waste. The step-by-step -step cooking is super easy too and you'll discover new dishes, techniques and ingredients the more you use it. And the best thing is, this is just the beginning. We'll constantly be adding new features and smarter ways to help us all crush the week's cooking. Plus, it's free for 30 days, so you might as well try it. Does it, does it hurt to get stung? Yeah, it does. How, who gets stung multiple times by jellyfish? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Just playing around Do you in put the it sink? on your holiday itinerary? <laughs> Where do you get stung? Uh, I got stung on my ankle. Yeah. I got stung on my uh, waist and I got stung on the foot. <laughs> so I trod on that. <laughs> <laughs>